So in this video, you're going to see uh, it's a bit of a mixed bag. It's kind of what I uh, my adventures for the for the week long. I'm trying to get a video that's 30 minutes plus. I've had problems posting long videos in the past, and I want to see if I'm able to post a 30 minute plus long video. So you're going to see me breaking some uh, trails with the tundra and some fresh powder, some really good powder. You're also going to see where I'm going to leave right from my my house and drive straight up to where I was camping. A lot of people wondering exactly how far back or where I was. So I take you on uh, the full trip of to where I was. I was only a kilometer behind the house. I wanted to get far enough away where I wasn't hearing any of the noises from the village. And I also wanted to have a nice, quiet, peaceful evening in the woods. But I think the main part of this video, I hope you watched it right till the end, but I hope you really like the part where I find the bear's den. Okay, before we jump right into this video, I want to go over uh, some of the comments I had on my last video, my camping video. Uh, the majority of the people said it was a, a taunt line hitch, not that I was using on a tent. I also had a rolling hitch, and like I said, I heard it called the cinch knot, the tent knot, and the peg knot. But the majority ruling is it's a taunt line hitch. I'd really like to thank everybody for all the comments that they left on uh, stoves and, and the tips to, to try and, and get a longer than a one hour burn out of the stove. Right now I think I'll be checking out the Camp Chef Alpine heavy duty cylinder stove that sold at Walmart because we have a Walmart right here in town. So I've had a lot of questions over the past about making my videos a little bit longer. Uh, right now my videos, I try to keep them somewhere between 5 and 15 minutes. I don't want to bore you guys, but I've had comments, <clears throat> not so much on my uh, channel, but talking to people, that they like to watch the YouTube videos on a big screen TV. And it's hardly worth the trouble to set up the big screen TV to watch a five minute video. And I understand that. How do you guys watch your videos? Do you watch it on the computer? Do you watch it on the big screen TVs? the tablets or your cell phones uh, leave a comment let me know exactly how you like to watch your YouTube videos what what kind of uh, um, I guess what viewing platform do you use but I don't want to bore you with a talking head so I'm gonna go get changed now and head up in the woods check my snares I'm kinda curious to see what the snow has done in the last couple days because we had a super mild and lots of rain. So I think it's settled and I think it's settled quite a bit and I hope I don't have any washes out there to fix. Well we've had yet another storm so that means it's time for the tundra to break some more trails. Lots of fresh powder with this storm. In my yard alone the snow depth ranges from 2 feet to 5 feet as the snow collects more in some places than it does in others. It looks like somebody bent me to this section. This little tundra sure can climb up on top of the snow in a hurry. Just give it a quick shot of gas and up she goes. Somebody got stuck here. Well, that's enough following somebody else's tracks. It's time to enjoy this fresh powder.
Sometimes you don't get a good understanding of how deep the snow really is when I shoot it from the point of view of my GoPro that's strapped to my head. But once I go back over the trail I just broke, you can get a much better understanding of the depth of the new snow. Fresh Pine Martin tracks. Nice to see. Here I'm going slow, trying to push the snow ahead of the skidoo to fill in the dips in the trail. Once you get the snow into a low spot, just give a quick shot of gas and the tundra climbs up over it. Now to check my snares. Well, this is off to a great start. The first one is buried under 10 inches of snow. <laughs> and look at this. The rabbits run right over the top of my gate stick that the snare is tied to just 10 inches below. And the last snare is also under about 12 to 14 inches of snow. I know it's here somewhere. Hard to catch rabbits like this. Day after day, digging out snares. I will pass this section of trail again a little later, and you'll see just how high the banks of snow are compared to the hood of the skidoo. Let's go break some more trails. Powder drifts, three feet deep, nice, this will be fun. Lots of fresh powder here today. I'll show you those drifts again in a minute when I head back down. The moose was right up to his belly here when he stepped off the trail. Here are those drifts again. Well, this will give you a better idea of how deep they really are. This is the last trail that I'm going to break today. Check out the height of those banks alongside the skidoo. The trail is starting to look a lot smoother now. Some folks were wondering where I set up my tent in the last video. 
Well, I was just behind the house in the woods. I'll take you there right now on the skidoo. It's approximately about a five minute ride. We'll soon hit my snowshoe trail, which cuts onto the Skidoo Trail. There's Karen on my tracks now. It's all uphill from this point on. I've been seeing some pirate reach tracks up here the last few days. Not much further now to the camping site. Here it is coming up on the left hand side. And straight down that trail ahead is where I seen the glowing eyes in the last video. I set up the tent here for the first trial because I didn't want to go too far back. I'm only about a kilometer behind my house. Just far enough to have a nice, quiet, peaceful night in the woods and see some wildlife. Karen and I decided to go check some stairs. And on the way in, we came across a rabbit. This one will make a good stew. Maybe I'll give it to Cousin Jack. He likes shot rabbits better than snare ones. I 
stuck a snowboard here. I found it summer. Somebody must have dropped it off the back of the canoe and stuck it up in a tree. So, anybody up in Cold Brook looking for a snowboard? One right there. That's what it looks like. So we we're just up for a quick snowshoe, checking <coughs> a couple of uh, rabbit snares. I'm trying to, to get out every day and do a little bit of walking because after I had that chest infection, something still um, it sits on my uh, sits on my chest. So I'm trying to work it out through exercise and fresh air. But anyway, we did a little bit of exploring today, and we came across something very interesting. I'll go back up after and film it because uh, my camera might have got a little bit nervous. <laughs> hey, Karen. A little bit. <laughs> we came across a bear dam. So I'll go up after and uh, get that on, on camera for you guys so you can see what a, what a bear den looks like and what to look for when you're out in the woods and you ever come across uh, a bear den. Hey, did you ever look into a bear's den? Well, do you want to? <laughs> I found a bear den today and I'll give you guys a, a little peek of what to look for. Notice the ice crystals on the sides of the hole. There's something warm down there. Maybe more than one something. I was making a, a snowshoe line, a spot where me and the wife could come up snowshoeing every day. And I could set out some rabbit snares. I just wanted to go, you know, probably do a loop two to four kilometers long and just get out and get the exercise I need for my lungs. But, come across the bear den, so I'm not sure if the wife wants to keep coming back in here or not. <laughs> okay, as you can see, I'm back to the skidoo, the tundra, and I got close enough so I could put the camera right over the hole and put it down just a little bit. But where I was standing, it felt like it was starting to give away. <clears throat> And I looked into the hole when I first found it this morning and it looked to be about four and a half, five feet deep there. So the last thing I wanted to do was, because I don't know where the bear is actually at in, in that hole, and the last thing I want to do is uh, end up on top of a sleeping bear. That could, uh, that could make for an interesting situation. So anyway, I, I don't think my wife is going to want to come up here snaring rafts with me. I need to find a new trail. One where the bears are not sleeping on. Out checking my snares just before supper, and yes, they're all covered in snow again. It's a good thing I'm only setting up this line of snares to force me to get out daily to check them and to get my exercise. Maybe tomorrow I'll have better luck with the snow not covering up my snares. And after seeing a few rabbits here over the last few years, I better keep an eye out. It sure is nice to be able to access the great outdoors from right out my back door. This was something I was always able to do where I grew up in Stephenville. However, there are a lot of changes to my old neighborhood since I left for the military 30 years ago. Where the woods once stood, there is a subdivision now. Yes, I'm truly lucky to be living where I'm living at now. This is another morning, and yes, you've guessed it, more snow. It's time to go see how much digging I have to do to get my snares in working order once again. I only have six snares set, just enough to ensure I get out and tend them on a daily basis. Yep, six snares set, and the rabbits ran over the top of four of them. It's hard to catch rabbits with snow like this. Now once I start feeling better, and my lungs are fully cleared up, I will set some snare pins out under thick cover and catch a few more rabbits. 
But for now, my intentions are focused on giving me a reason to get out snowshoeing every day, even when I don't want to go. Having to check these six snares is giving me that reason. I would like to thank all my subscribers, new and old, for tuning into my channel and taking the time to leave comments. And please don't be afraid to leave some constructive criticism that could help me make, edit, and entertain you all better. Tell me what you like and what you're not so fond of. My channel gets as many new subscribers as I lose. Someone will see one of my nature videos or whale watching videos and sub to my channel, only to unsub when the next video I post shows me hunting, snaring, or trapping something. Let me assure you all that I am truly a nature lover. I get more out of watching the animals than I do harvesting them any day of the week and three times on Sunday. However, I also know the importance of conservation. I've seen firsthand when I was a trapper for the DNR in Nova Scotia what happens when animals overpopulate and disease breaks out in their population. It's sad to see healthy animals fall to diseases like distemper, where good strong healthy animals takes weeks and up to three months to finally succumb to the disease. So. I promised myself a long time ago that I would continue to do my part to help the animals I love not to go through that again. Plus, I'm able to feed my family with good healthy meat, free of growth hormones and preservatives. I will try and give you all a warning when you see me harvest something. I will tell you what point to fast forward to, to avoid seeing the things that might upset you. You'll see very little cursing in my videos as I try to make them so that you can sit down as a family and watch it all together. Now I've had a few people ask me to start making longer videos to try and get away from the 5 to 10 minute long videos where there's no point in going through the trouble to putting them onto the big screen TV. I will attempt to make this video 30 minutes plus. Let me know what you think. What do you guys prefer? Short or long videos? Drop a comment. Your feedback is greatly appreciated. These trees blew down in the last windstorm we got where the winds got up to 130 kilometers per hour. Tonight the winds are predicted they get up to 150 kilometers per hour. Not to mention the snow, freezing rain, and rain to accompany those strong winds. Now I'm back to my yard. My house is just right there. Hey St. George, strong winds that may cause damage are expected or occurring. Extremely strong south easterly winds will gust with gusts reaching up to 160 kilometers an hour will develop Sunday evening, 160. That's a Cat 2 hurricane. Tonight, 5 millimeters of rain with wind gusts up to 150 kilometers an hour along parts of the coast. It's only gusting to 80 kilometers at the moment, so I better get outside and clear up the driveway while the snow is still light. Once the rain soaks the snow, it gets super heavy and hard to move. I wouldn't want to be in Port of Bass tonight or tomorrow. With all this wind plus 80 millimeters of rain, huh, not good. It's going to be close to midnight before I finish clearing up the driveway, but it looks like I've gotten out here just in time. The rain will soon start and the snow will be getting hard to push. It's a good thing I only have a short little driveway. going to be making full cuts with the plow tonight and then make all the necessary passes to clean up all the overspill afterwards. But I want to get this driveway cleared in a hurry.
it's time to clear up the wind rolls of snow that I put on the road. This is something I always try to do for the courtesy of the other drivers and the folks who operate the heavy equipment at the Department of Highways. They seem to do a great job of not putting much snow into my driveway and I truly appreciate that. So I'm not going to leave any snow on the roads or highways that they plow. Now it's time to clean up the turnaround in front of the house and then I can put the meal to bed. I can't wait to get my garage finished and the trailer back outside. It's only in here because I've never gotten around to sealing up the wood on the deck of it before the rainy fall hit and then the early winter. I was predicting to have completed the entire outside of the garage before the end of October. Huh. <laughs> Boy was I wrong. Good. It looks like the winds only gusted to 80 kilometers here last night, but I heard they hit 160 kilometers an hour out at the wreck house. Look at all that rain. I think I'm going to wait until tomorrow before I go and check my snares. And my driveway? Well, I can play ice hockey out there. I hope I don't come across any washouts on my trails today. So far everything is looking good, but I'll soon get to the section that always seems to hold water in the winter rains. I would like to give a big shout out to Wilmore Newman for the GoPro pole that I use on all my aerial shots. I truly don't use this pole as much as I should. The truth is, well, I'm just lazy when it comes to filming my adventures. I'm trying to get better at taking the time to set up the camera and get the shots needed to produce a decent video. But when I'm out traveling around and I see wildlife, the first thing I reach for is my binoculars, and then it's the camera. Well, with how much the snow has settled, I doubt very much if I'll be having to dig out any of my snares today. I'm betting that all my snares will be too high, and if the rabbits run last night, I think they would all would have run underneath of my snares. It's a good thing I'm only doing this for exercise. But like I said earlier, I'm starting to feel a lot better and I'm soon going to start focusing on catching some rabbits. It's time to get serious with these guys. As always, I hope you enjoyed my video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you like my video and your content. Like, share, all that kind of stuff. And I'll see you on my next adventure. And don't forget to leave comments. Do you like the longer videos? Do you like the shorter videos? Let me know. Also, I'd like to give a big shout out to the Benoits. Thank you guys very much for the CD and the music I use in the background of my videos. It's very much appreciated. And if anybody would like a copy of the CD that I use in my background music, call Doug at 709-649-3281. That's 709-649-3281.